Commissioner's Court. We'll make, we're going to make roll call. Yower? Here. Rosales, I'm here. Barbara Shaw is not here. Shindo? Here. Hummel? Here. Swayze? Here. Staff are open prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for all the good you bless our way. Please take care of our military, wherever they may be, and please bring them back home safe. Please help us make decisions that are most valuable for Carnes County. We ask this in the most holy name. Amen. Amen. To the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Citizens to be heard? Yes, there's one. Sharon Chester. Uh, Commissioner's uh, Court, we'd like to introduce uh, the new special project assistant, Ms. Kelly Fernandez. Happy to have you. Thanks. <laughs> okay, number six, we're on item number six. Presentation of Road and Bridge Budget. Arthur Jeff. to work for to um, you know capitalize the, themselves and to be better employees they can work themselves up a little bit you know to a uh, higher pay. So you have like a step raise? Yes sir. Yeah. Jeff then, on your administrative assistant you don't show an hourly rate is that going to just remain the same? Yes ma'am. On Priscilla? Yes. No we you know what I forgot about. Listed, it's just a pay rate isn't listed. Yeah, that's going to be kind of. I need to pick her up because she's doing the work for Mr. Chenwell, plus she's working with us a whole lot. She helps Mr. Chenwell a, a lot with that. So I'm going to kind of leave that to Mr. Chenwell and we we'll get together and talk about that. See what we can come up with. Is your microphone on? Yeah. What's she currently making right now? What is it? The, I don't have that with me either. That's, that's fine. Yeah. And uh, this is the deal on the backhoe from RDO. Uh, that's the cost of the machine, which is 70000 John, do they have a cab? No. Open station. You don't need a cab on the backhoe. All you're going to do is knock the glass out of it. And that's for sure. Okay. 
Jeff, one thing on this, I, I see the, the price on the 69263, but there's $1,100 there, right? The warranty information, that's for additional warranty? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That's for additional warranty. If you want the machine comes with a three-year bumper. How much? Three-year bumper to bumper warranty. And this ex and that'll be a, if you want to buy, buy additional, um, uh, additional two years. That's what it'll cost. You. Okay, this is for an additional two years. Yes, sir. Bumper to bumper basis. Yes, sir. Well, they they will stipulate it. Then you don't get everything, but like you like your AC out, your electric. Your, your, your drive train with okay. anything electrical in okay. it. It'll be your drive train, your, uh, your rear end, your... Uh, Basically your power train? Yeah, your power train, yes sir. Okay. Yeah. For the other two years? Yes, in the field? Sir? In the field, do you have to take it in? Uh, no, they'll they'll pick it up. Yeah, that's that's part of their service. They will pick it up. For the two years, uh, yeah. additional two years? Yes, sir. Sounds pretty good. Yeah, it's actually a good deal. Yeah, just to pick it up, it's going to be worth that. Yeah. Right? Any other questions for Jeff? All right. Moving to number, item number seven. Discuss approved, disapprove reimbursement request for truth and taxation training. Bear with me here, there's a lot of numbers. 429-51-2012, 822-52. Membership, $80. Registration, 190 Mileage, 114 Hotel accommodation, 391 Meals, 46 Dollars and ninety-seven cents, and tax dot title registration training mileage on five sixteen twelve one hundred and nine point forty five cents to Brenda Yanasek prior to assuming the office of tax assessor collector. Total nine hundred and thirty-one dollars and ninety-seven cents. Refer to LGC one fifty-two point nine zero seven. Copy of tax. Arthur Brenda Luana. Brenda did some training before she actually took office on July 1st, and it will be at the discretion of the Commissioner's Court whether to reimburse her for those expenses since it was before she was actually in office. Okay, this is qualified training that she would have had to take later? Correct. So it still qualifies against her hours and all that, right? Correct. Mr. Busselman, I don't see anything wrong with that. I don't either. Right? Okay. I don't want to make the motion, but you don't have to read everything out. <laughs> <laughs> make, out. make the motion to approve reimbursement request for truth and taxation to Brenda Yanni Sink. I second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion passed. Number eight. Briefing by Karen Oviela, Intergovernmental Relations Coordinator for the San Antonio River Authority, Sarah, regarding the waste collection event scheduled for September 8th. 2012 for the collection of household hazardous waste, used tires, used electronics, and pharmaceuticals for the benefit of Clark County residents. Good morning, Commissioner. Thank you for having me. Um, I wanted to come to you today and talk to you a little bit about um, hoping to be able to hold a um, waste collection event uh, for the citizens of Carnes County. And before I get started, of course, my name is Karen O'Gill. I'm Intergovernmental Relations uh, Coordinator for the San Antonio River Authority. And I also brought with me Brian Mast from our Intergovernmental Relations Department as well. And um, so if you have any questions, I think, you know, either one of us can answer those. Uh, we have the event just tentatively scheduled for September 8th due to um, needing 45 day uh, notice to TCEQ and all of that and trying to get a contractor that might be available. So that's not set in stone, it can be changed, but we're hoping to be able to hold it on that day. Um, we have contractors available to do that. And um, I wanted to kind of first go over, um, uh, just as a um, reminder, the last couple events that we held were back in, um, well, the first one was uh, October 9th of 2010, and then there was one also held June 11th of 2011. And uh, those events were um, supported by and uh, funded through a grant that Carnes County got through uh, TCEQ, well, actually through ACOG, but they were TCEQ funds uh, from the Solid Waste Grant Funds. and. Um, we were initially only going to hold one, but um, we had extra funds, and so uh, TCEQ and ACOG allowed us to go ahead and, and uh, hold a second event. And uh, I want to especially thank Commissioner Hummel. He was a, a great support in that, and of course, Luana, you know, paid all the bills, made sure everything got taken care of. And so 
Um, but what I wanted to mention um, was uh, at, just at the June 11th event, I kind of just went through the very last one. Um, I do have the results of both with me here, but the last one, we, we served 89 cars, which represented 124 households. Um, and we also surveyed all of those vehicles, and uh, 85 of those 89 cars, uh, when they were asked if they would like to have more frequent collections, the answer was yes. I also just, um, as an aside, have gotten several um, questions from citizens myself, and I know Commissioner Hummel has mentioned to me that he's had several um, uh, citizens, and maybe some of you have as well, asking when's the next one. And so, um, as you know, uh, we weren't able to get the uh, ACOG, uh, the funding this year for the ACOG grant, and so uh, the San Antonio River Authority, uh, the board members, which of course uh, your board members here are Mr. Galen Elke and Mr. Tripp Ruckman, uh, they represent Carnes County on our board, um, but our, our, board of, um, our board members gave direction to staff to try to make an event happen anyway. And uh, so Sarah's going to uh, fund an event. We have uh, some money uh, that, we're, what, that we've got budgeted for that. Um, and we wanted just to go ahead and fill the void of, of not of the absence of having that ACOG grant. And um, so um, we wanted to be able to go and to do another event. In this event, um, we would want to collect Household hazardous waste, as we did the last time, used tires, as we did the last time, used electronics as well. And we wanted to, we're hoping to add a component, although I haven't had a chance yet to talk to Sheriff Jalufka, because I will have to have his support, but I wanted to come before the commissioners first and make sure I had your support. But we'd like to also collect pharmaceuticals. As you know, pharmaceuticals, or as you may know, there's um, been a lot of research lately showing uh, the, uh, the dangers of the unwanted and unused uh, pharmaceuticals in, in the environment, and many people flush them down the toilet or don't know how to dispose of those properly, and so we want to give them a place to dispose of those safely, and they will eventually be taken for incineration. But any type, any time you do um, one of those types of collections, you have to have a law enforcement agency that's willing to take um, responsibility for that. So uh, I have kind of mentioned it to Sheriff Delufka, and he seems, you know, like he's up, up for it. But of course, I'm sure he'll be looking to you to know that you also support that. So um, that's my briefing on item eight. Um, any questions, please let me know. I'm just wondering if you still have tires left. How many do you have? No, I, I would say close to a thousand. I think it was a thousand. Yeah, because um, close to a thousand fit in each truck, and uh, we already took two trucks from there, mm -hmm. and you have at least that many more. Yeah. Yes, no each truck takes 900. The question on form says, what's the function of law enforcement at the collection? The function of law enforcement is actually to, uh, they are responsible for the drugs themselves because when you collect a drug such as this, the DEA ruling is that they all have to be collected as um, controlled substances and therefore the law enforcement has to be in charge of the controlled substance. They have to have custody of them from the time they're collected all the way until the time they're, they're uh, incinerated. Incinor and so that's their, their function there is to oversee the collection, make sure everything's going from the cars directly to where the boxes, and then the boxes are stored at that um, facility until they can take them for incineration or we can arrange to have them taken for incineration by other law enforcement. Do you provide lockbox containers? We have, they're not lockboxes, no, sir. Um, I haven't talked to Sheriff how he takes care of his drugs, but most law enforcement agencies have already a lock room that they have to, any time they confiscate drugs, they keep those in. And so uh, we have actual box, just boxes that you collect them in. They're really just boxes, literally cardboard boxes. Um, and they would, they would just have to keep custody of them, have them always in their site, and take those directly to their facility or to another facility if they're going to directly incinerate them. How do they take care of that? Is it true that my understanding that these pharmaceuticals, when flushed, they ultimately end up in the river, and the 
fish ingest them and it actually shows up in that meat, these ones that are there's, there's many uh, studies that show that, yes, and um, so just to avoid any possibilities to damage to any environmental uh, aspect of the, of the environment, we want to make sure that, you know, we're, we're taking every precaution. You asked about the tires. Is there any way we can have some of the tires? Well, let me just state again that the San Antonio River Authority is is um, going to budget now the next item is going to ask you for some financial support. So, kind <laughs> of that that might play in there. But um, with the San Antonio River Authority initially now uh, is planning is one just one one vehicle. That's what you know we've got we've got funding for one truck that would be there the day of the collection for them to put tires in the day of the collection and collect them from the citizens. Now, that's what, up to, I'm sorry, that's a thousand tires basically what you're saying? Close to, yes. Close to yeah, county. yeah. And if there's room, obviously the county could bring their tires and put them in there as well. Um, after that, if you are willing, obviously, to fund, which will be up to you, I'd be more than happy to get it arranged with Liberty Tire for you to get them to come, either come to the facility and load them as we had last time. Now, I mean, as an aside, it's not, you know, on the agenda, but um, there there are some SEP funds that Degola RC&D has, and I've tried to arrange a tire um, pickup with those funds. Um, and uh, I actually would like to just give you the phone number to Jerry Pierce. I can do that after because I have it on my phone. He's supposed to be taking care of it, and he was supposed to have contacted you. Now, I tried to call him earlier. Now, I know that he hasn't the last time, I, and I had asked Carl about it the last time, too. And uh, it's, it's because of some funding issues and things like that that the RCNDs now are running without admin, admin assistance, things like that. So there's a lot of reasons why that hasn't happened, but I do know there is that, like, 4000 and some odd dollars. Just that's as an aside, has nothing to do with Sarah or you know any of this that we're discussing if we want to make sure that they're taken care of obviously if you you know want me to do that for you I can do that but we don't have the funding Sarah doesn't have funding to right. send extra trucks right. Where are those trucks? Where um, they're right under cost? 2000 or well actually the last time that I had to get one uh, for Goliad it ended up right over 2000 because they've begun now to charge us um, Actually, it was I think it was 2,400 if they come and they load. That was what I think y'all y'all have a contract on file because I helped y'all to get that contract in place last time. So it would be under your contract with Liberty Tire. You can look on there and see what their contract says. But um, on top of that, now they've been charging a, a fuel surcharge. So you know they may mention that to you as well. I, I just want to point out that you say we talking about a thousand tires per truck but that's small only if they load them and they lay them, they stack them. Lay some, either they load tire, them tire. or you load them and they show you how to load them properly right and we we really probably don't I think the first time they were they came and they showed because we used road and bridge crew the very first event they showed them how to lace those tires properly so that we could fit as many as possible and you're correct Carl I mean it depends on who's collecting them those, that day and on the day of the event, we will only accept small uh, tires, which are, you know, small truck and car tires. We don't accept the big, you know, tires or anything like that. And if Not you look at your contract, no. If you look at your contract, you'll know why. <laughs> because they're, like, r really expensive for those to be disposed of. So you want to keep those things in mind as well if you decide that you want to you know, have them come on the site or whatever. And again, I'd be happy to help you all with that. But we just don't have the funding to do that other than the one truck. But we could fund it as the county ourselves and get rid of all the tires. Oh, sure. Sure. Yeah, yeah you have a contract yeah, right. with Liberty Tire. Maybe that is correct. We're discussing that too, so we may just go ahead and do that, but I'll call that guy Jerry mm -hmm. first, but maybe on the next, we'll, we'll, we'll wait till yeah. number nine. Jerry's with De, De, La, De Gola, so mm -hmm. that's those SEP funds that definitely they're there for your county and they're supposed right. to be for you tires so those need to get spent because otherwise TCEQ will take them back right. and and that's of course state goal is responsibility but um, but other than that separately the county also has a, a contract because I know I helped y'all secure that last year Sarah also has a contract with Liberty Tire which has pretty much the same prices as y'all do so either way but 
Um, if we would do that separately, I'd rather do it under the county contract with Liberty Tire just to keep y'all active with them. So, any other questions? Okay. You want to move on to nine? Yeah, move on to number nine. To discuss approve, this approved request by Sarah for Parks County Financial and personal support for the successful completion of the September 8, 2012 waste collection of Van Sarah's specifically requesting the assistance of Carnes County Rodenburg Department to support a tire collection component of the waste collection event. Karen. Okay, on that item, uh, what I wanted you to know is um, San Antonio River Authority, well, the last two events cost approximately $15,000 each. I think the first one was a little bit less, um, and then the second one was closer to $15,000 each, and uh, or $15,000, and so um, we have the River Authority um, tried to put that amount into our budget. Now, obviously, we are an, an entity that serves Wilson, Carnes, Goliad, as well as Bear County, so we need to, you know, spread our funds appropriately and um, and um, and make sure that, that we're being fair to everyone. So, um, in in the spirit of that, we wanted to come to uh, Carnes County and ask for some sort of financial support to add to um, to be able to make sure that this is a very successful event. Um, on top of it, obviously, if you want to do tires, that, that we can do that together or separately or however you want to do that. Um, but did want to come today um, to, to discuss with you um, the possibility for some financial support. Um, also, um, as I stated before, um, I mean, I, I know road and bridge employees, that's what their, their purpose is. Um, if there's some other department that maybe uh, could happen or whatever. Um, when we collect tires, that's really, honestly, the, the dirtiest, hottest, hardest job, and it's really hard for us to find volunteers. Now, if you want to take that on and find volunteers yourself, that's wonderful, um, but um, either way, we would like to have your support in um, making sure that we will have some sort of um, Carnes County personnel or Carnes County will take responsibility for the um, the tire collection at the event. <clears throat> main that that's the main part of it really. The rest of it is kind of done by the by the uh, contractors themselves. But um, that part there again, it's important as to how they get stacked. Um, and uh, it's you know some it just depends on how many tires you get obviously. But um, the last or the very first event we had road and bridge and employees that were able to help us and that was the most successful event in that everything went smoothly and it was it was really able to go well so that's the reason we're asking for that as well don't they send their they, they're willing to send their own guys up to for not on the collection day no, simply no. because um, they they won't go by our schedule if they were gonna <coughs> if they were gonna do it they want to be able to schedule when they can do that and it's you know it's far and few between that <laughs> they have days available to send their own people. Yeah. So um, they won't they won't go with whatever day we pick for the collection. Those no, days just, they want to just take and uh, you know park a truck the day before, come pick it up after the weekend's over or whatever, and that's it. What if we fund as a county? We fund a whole truck, and they're they're coming directly to go and take care of that job. Then they'll probably bring some employees of their own. Right? Correct. They don't have to sit around and wait for our schedule. They have done that before. Correct. That's because correct. I mean, it would be senseless to get the county employees to do that, train them to do that, when these guys come and do it a third of the time. Well, yeah, but for the event today, most of what we collect is tires. Right. Mm -hmm. the, the event is different, but okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Cor. Yeah, I want to make sure, too. I'm, I'm talking just about, like, if we fund one truck for Carnes County to get rid of those tires. At the? At the collection station. Correct. Right? Not, not the event. No, the then, event then you separate. can tell them, I want it done between this period of time, and they'll tell you, okay, well, my guys will be there this right. day. You know, kind this of This is thing. the problem there is that we have to find someone over here, because they can't schedule with our time, right? Correct. So what time to what time is that? Um, we plan to do that from 8 a.m. until 12 p.m. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's on a Saturday, of course. On a Saturday. Now, uh, Road and Bridge, I know they're always busy and they always have stuff to do, but maybe we could uh, get some community service help out there. There's always a lot of people in community, so we could talk to Karen. And maybe we could, how many people do you need? Y'all did there? use community service before. Um, the only concern that I have there is using them in other counties as well as here. They had four people that promised they'd come and one came that day. I think we had like a 10 or 12 promise to come and 
one came. One showed up. That's it. Mm -hmm. Well, the last time we did the last time we did that with the sheriff, it was a couple of years ago that we're doing community service like that. And uh, Karen told me if you don't show up, the sheriff will go pick you up. And that's fine. I mean, I don't have a problem they, with how that's a, done. I just want to, you know, just to reinforce that whatever decision you make, we'd like to make sure that there are at least four to six guys, I would say, that could, and they don't have to be guys, I said long, four to six individuals who, you know, will be willing to at least do that portion. There are other portions of the um, collection that they also can help with, um, but that's the main portion. See, the problem is, like, we put all the tires, say, in the yard, and then we call them and say, hey, come get them. They have to be loaded twice because you have to, you know, take them from there, put them over the road and bridge, and then those guys, that's, they get to handle three times that way. So you, you basically have to have the truck and load it as, as they come in right. to avoid that problem. What do you think, guys? What do you think about it? I just think there won't, be a, there won't be a truckload of tires brought on Saturday, will there? For people? We... Normally, what is it? Is it what, what was your question? I'm there sorry. Will, will there be a truckload brought by individuals on Saturday? Uh, we had pretty close to a truckload. The second event and the first event, we had about a little over a half. People within the county, I mean, what it does, obviously, is give them another place to dispose of their tires rather than putting them on the county roads. Um, we also did allow the last time for, you know, the county commissioners, if they had some at, that they had picked up on the roads or whatever, they brought them that day, and we stacked them into the truck. And, you know, that's obviously not a problem, because those are obviously ones that are coming from the community that hadn't been paid for and that type of thing to dispose of. If it's, uh, if it's, if it's community service people, what umbrella do they fall under, Mr. Musselman? Like, does tires carry Black Widow, Scorpion, you know, they get bit? Uh, I'm sorry. If we're, if we're using community service people on that Saturday, or would they fall under? <coughs> well, it'll be, it'll be basically county kind of employees on a temporary basis, but we need to make sure we have some liability or something to cover them in case they do get some carpet bit or the rattlesnake bit. Black Widows, Scorpions on those tires. And I'm not pushing the idea, but I think that's why we chose, or the county chose to do the, the road and bridge individuals right, because they're, they're already, they're already they're covered under right? yeah. the workers' yeah. 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 And, and Karen, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'd like to say we got a half a trailer load, uh -huh. and then the event was over, could we go out and get some of the tires? Oh, definitely. And Very and definitely. And yeah, and that's, that, I did state that earlier. Yes. That's, that's what we did last time. So the trailer went back to the full load. There's no reason to waste we that, I agree. We filled it halfway, then we went out here, the road and bridge guys loaded up another half a load of tires. And this was just last year? Uh, yeah, June, no. June of 2011. I, I don't remember. I know uh, in October of 2010 we definitely used road and bridge because we actually had the truck even parked over there, which we could do again. How many people from road and bridge did you have over there? What do we have, about six or eight? We, and it's better if you have a bunch of them, then you don't overwork any of them, you know, because moving those tires is not, it's not easy. And that box van is, there's no breeze, it's hot. So we kind of rotate them out. Two guys work for a while and another two. I would really like to use community service people. That's what I would like to use. But let me ask Mr. Bussman to make sure, because if they, if they fake, uh, safety fall under or county insurance or something we're, we're not open up for no, we need a backup plan in case right. they don't show up exactly more than likely and then the sheriff could go pick them up but if you can't find them what are you going to do it doesn't help us that day <laughs> it doesn't it's not going to help us that day <laughs> and keep in mind that i mean this is a grant the county needs to put something into it, some kind of effort some kind of monetary funds to, to i mean you can't expect them to just come and do everything. I mean, we got to we got to kind of pull our bootstraps. Up okay, Karen, this does say financial support. What kind of financial support are you are you requesting? I left it blank. We would like, you know, a few thousand, whatever the county can can afford to do. Um, anything, obviously, that you can add to the pot would help to um, add to the um, um, event being more of a success as well as, again, opening those funds up for use with throughout our, our basin. Um, you know, again, you know, we serve four counties, so we need to be equitable and, and it needs to, 
the, you know, uh, when we have um, any sort of inquiries or anything, we do a answer to the citizens. And, you know, if they see that um, we're giving all our money to Carnes County, that might be an issue. And so, you know, a, a good faith, whatever uh, type of, for, because we're doing this for the benefit of the Carnes County citizens and the environment in Carnes County. Something like you're asking for financial support on this. If we give any kind of uh, financial support, we don't have it anywhere on the line item right now, right? Right. That is correct. It would be an unforeseen. Excuse me? Right. It would be an unforeseen that you could budget amend for. Yes. The judge asked me to turn to you and ask you to put it as a line item into the budget. For yeah, I know we don't have anything for this. That's correct. The I run the bridge guys if we should so choose to use them mm -hmm. that goes towards like uh, that would show as, as some support as well yes right. it, and if you don't my thoughts would be that the county would any up a little bit more money because you're not putting any physical workforce out there to, to do this so maybe if you give them some money maybe we can can, do, can you hire people to move by? <coughs> I haven't honestly looked into that, but I <coughs> assume that there is a way to do that. I mean, th it sounds like Liberty Tire is just not going to work on Saturday. No, no. I mean, they, they don't pay for it. Mr. Busman? James, uh, do we, can we still get prisoners? I believe if you get some prisoners to do that, they would be covered by whatever insurance they That's true. Prison keeps, and I don't, because they used to work on the roads here, kind of routinely. Yeah, it was just. I think that's a really good idea. The only problem I have with that is that when these citizens drive up there and they see a guy all tattooed up and, you know, you know and he's in a prison uniform, it's kind of scary because a lot of them have their children with them. And oh, they have it's just there. not. If you have some guys there that says Corns County Road Bridge and they're clean cut, oh, you know. I don't know. Y'all know what y'all want to. That, that Karen, is, that is a, are the funds from Dagola only available for like hiring Liberty Tractor or something like that? Could those funds be used also to maybe fund <coughs> some labor costs? No, not not okay. specifically for this particular event, but um, but to collect tires from the county at and um, if they were going to do it through through a contractor, they would have to have a specific contractor. Jeffrey, we talked about Road and Bridge. Just watch out all right if you have Road and Bridge up and then they get time off for the time. Well, Pete, what this, what this does is if the community brings their tires there, at least I don't have to send them out on the county roads to pick up the tires. It's a plus for us. It costs us time, money to go out and pick these tires up anyway. The last time this was done, it helped a lot. Now we're getting through that. It's been almost a year. We're starting to see more and more tires out there. I think we do this run, it's gonna kind of disappear again. It's gonna help us, because it is helping. And uh, uh, we can spend $2,000 in a hurry out there with a trailer and, and a few guys picking up trash and tires. So that, you, it will help. You got two choices. You're gonna pay either way. Yeah. Either you, you're gonna have room bridge there and helping people bring these tires and load them in a truck, or he can go out there with his employees with a truck and trailer and pick them up off the I county just, roads. I just want him to say it's okay. Yes, sir. I'm yep. just, that's all I think. Okay, so if, if it comes to that, if it comes to that, you're okay with using oh, the yeah. you're, yeah. you're okay. Because it's a plus for us. We don't have to go out and pick it up off the roads. Okay. And how many people, well, how many people did you say? It was four to six? Shoot, I think we had. We had yeah, six, I think we had about eight, eight just last time. time. We had quite a few. Eight people from Road and Bridge yeah. came and worked four hours that day? Yeah. And they were all okay with it? They were yes, all. Sir. Oh, yeah. See, I know they're getting paid, but they volunteer to go do that, right? They yes. work. Okay. Part of the problem is that the trailer truck stands up, you know, right. this high or whatever, and Road and Bridge had a loader over there. We put all the tires in the loader and raise it up to that level, and then just kind of roll them in there. Just, oh, I got and you. Some of them. And if it's and if it would be community <laughs> service, they're not going to be able to run a loader. Load no. Can't put them on that. They wouldn't be bridge. covered under heavy equipment. No, sir. Came out and run the county with us. Just as well have Road Bridge do it, not have to worry about finding somebody that wants to put in their time, get it over with. You got them in your precinct. You got them in your precinct. <laughs> All these commissions, we got James. in our precincts on the road. Oh, I'm sorry. Very nice, Betty. With regard to the Road Bridge doing it, does this fall under something that they would normally do as part of their regular activities? Pick it up time. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. So, they got to pick them up off the county roads. Everybody yeah, helps them out there. I just want to make sure we we check to see if it classifies. I've been doing it ever since there was tires. Yeah. Yeah. 
I've been to say they've been down County Road 330 picking up. <laughs> okay, well then, there may be something else. What, I, what we'll do is what I'll do is we can go ahead and do that, but if I can talk to Karen and she got 10, 15 people, we'll talk to the sheriff or something to see if, like we did the last time, we had a good one. And then maybe one or two guys running the loader or something. That'll be great. We, we could do something like that yeah. to where it wouldn't waste that much you know, money from the county, from the employee. But I would agree we need at least one or two with the loader because that's going to make it a lot quicker and easier, right? Yes, definitely. Okay, well then we kind of got that going, but also about the financial support. You're asking to have some kind of financial support, right? Uh, good faith, right? Exactly. And you don't have to make that decision today. I know that the judge said y'all have a special meeting coming up for budgeting or, or something like that. Or maybe it's going to be discussed at the next commissioner's court meeting. You know, and come back then. Um, do you want to, okay, like what do you need an answer for this? As quick as possible, right? Yeah, I don't have a timeline, but yes, please. Our next, I don't know when our next special meeting is probably Oh, it'll be the second Tuesday week. of the month, so it won't be next, but the following, unless you have one in between there. We have okay. a budget workshop on August 8th, and then okay, our regular meeting is the 14th. Okay, so okay. Yeah, we have one next week sometime, right? August 8th. Mm -hmm. I would say, guys, just if we could go ahead and just pass this for now, make a couple of calls, see what we can do, maybe with Karen and the sheriff, and if we can't and our hands are tied, then we're going to have to go to that route. But so you, you don't want to use road and bridge? So I don't mind. I don't mind, but if we can use some, if we can use uh, even like Mr. Bosman sent some of the inmates in. But I understand your issue you on have, there. You have to be guaranteed that those people are going to be there. Well, the inmates would be there. And you know. if I mean, if, if what you're suggesting today is to approve the motion um, for financial and personnel support for the successful completion of the event um, and specifically requesting the assistance of Carnes County Road and Bridge and support a tire collection component of the waste collection. That's what you're asking to go ahead and pass today, if I'm understanding correctly, and then y'all can discuss the logistics of that. Does That'd that sound be, what you're talking about? The only problem that I have with the Sheriff's Department with doing bringing inmates, if he assaulted his somebody in his family or somebody in the community and then that person pulls up there to unload tires, Here's this person. You have a point. It just, you know, it's just not cool. You have a point. It's just not cool. What, what's the possibility of that? Zero. Uh, pretty good. It's supposed to prove you have a somebody uh, Bob, uh, you know, they have well, relatives. It's just not a real good well, idea. We, we could, how, how could we go ahead? I'm, I'm sorry, let me interrupt. How can we go ahead and pass this but with that stipulation in there to work? We're still going to look at it and we're going to have on the special meeting maybe during the workshop so the judge can be here too and we can see what kind of financial support we can give them and if we can use any community service people we have to talk to Karen and the sheriff. Well you could do a couple of two things you could table it which means it's coming back up mm -hmm. but the problem is that whoever makes the motion to put it on the table has to make the motion to take it off. So remember what we've just done is to just pass it until the next time. No action. Uh, no action and there's no really no guarantee that's going to be back on the uh, agenda unless well, somebody could forget to put it on there. Uh, but that shouldn't happen. But that's my, my thinking would be that you're going to sort of have a half done here and a three quarter done there if you do anything today mm -hmm. until you've gone over. It. That's uh, kind of why I want to just, well, kind of why I said pass, but when she said we could do it a different way, well, Luana, I'm sorry, were you going to say? Well, you can do it as it's written, approve that motion with a caveat on your motion with financial aid and personnel to be determined at the August 8th special meeting of commissioner's court but you now have or we could just we could just pass it off as in pass it off just, say just pass don't it take action yeah, no, no action until the eighth put it back on on the eighth would there be a, would there be an issue of, for another week as far as i'm concerned that no. but we do we do uh, we do want to you know do some kind of financial support and we do want to help you all in any way and we also got to discuss about bringing in a truck and in the meantime i can call that guy jerry see if, if it's going to take way too long for that i don't know the judges uh, uh, we've talked, discussed about getting rid of them tires. She might just want to go ahead and bring in a truck and let's get rid of them tires. So I would, I would feel more comfortable waiting to the eighth on this one, and we'll put it back on the eighth if you don't mind coming back over here. We'll have a decision for you. We won't make you come again or waste your time. Do you want it stated exactly as it is, or and also would I be responsible for putting it back on the eighth, or 
would one of you take the responsibility? I can put it back. Sure I'll put it back, back on, on there. there. I, okay. I'll take responsibility for it. I'll put it back on the aid. And yes, just exactly as it is, is it is here. Okay. Unless let me see. Unless you want to add. It says I'm going to put it on here. If I'm going to go ahead. If I'm going to change it around, I'll let you know what I did. We'll email it to you, and then you're okay, and we're okay with it. Yeah, when you that, I'll call you and I'll tell you the changes that we make. Thank you. I appreciate that. Any other questions? Your, num your number. Oh, uh, you, could, you got a card? I'm going to give you my card because I want to get with you anyway afterwards and give you Jared's number. So. Okay. Uh, sorry, Karen. We couldn't come. No, not a problem. Right Thank I'm you. Really sorry. Okay, item number 10 discuss, approve, disapprove, adopt in the Cards County Road Use Agreement and establish the fee amount. Allow Commissioner of Precinct 4, Tracy Shindle, to execute on behalf of Carnes County if approved. Arthur Betty Order and Tracy Shindle. Tracy, Tracy's, uh, Tracy's uh, the one who brought this to uh, court, and we're looking at four different agreements. There are numbers, I guess, 10, 11, 11, 13 on the agenda, I think. Yeah. And, uh, and uh, other than the fact that y'all are going to have to make a determination as to what the, the dollar figure is going to be within the road use agreement. And if you should all have a copy of one in front of you. And on my item number three, uh, on the road, the road use agreement, that's where your dollar figure would go in. Your, your other counties around have, uh, DeWitt has currently charged us, I think, $8,000 per well. Uh, B County has recently put one in for them, and they they, they charge $9,500 per well. So you have to look at it and say what, what and, and there's no guarantee we'll get anything from any of them. Uh, but the, the fact is that, that they are using and abusing the roads, the oil companies, and we need to have something in there for, for them to have to put back into the community. Some of them are doing it in other ways. They're doing it by co contributing uh, materials, doing work themselves. But there's no nothing that we have that says that they have to, other than the statute, 25.16, uh, I think it's 251.160 of the Texas Transportation Code gives us the right to go after them for any abuse, any negligence and damages to the road, such as the bridge, which was uh, on 277 that we've recently replaced. And so we've got to have something to address those issues and, and also permits uh, that we've got. We've redone the permits, and that's in one of the other sections. But on this one, y'all need to address what dollar figure y'all want to charge. Uh, and I'll turn that back to y'all. Okay. Uh, we need to do number, uh, that's number 11, isn't it? Uh, dollar and application for the fee? Well, yes, well for, permit? No, there for the well order. permit, that, that's, this is for the road use agreement. Oh, and so this, I think this is the first one up on the agenda. Okay. And y'all have to set a fee amount for the for the amount y'all want to put in <coughs> under item number three on the road use agreement. In other words, this is <coughs> the, the uh, like the mileage from point A to point B. Well, this is your this is your big dollar number. Okay. Oh, okay. This, no, this is the this is the one that that should carry the the will for. Yes. Because well, it, what it's for that. is for strictly for roads. I mean, and, and all of this money will go back to the Road and Bridge Department. None of this money comes into the general fund. Yeah, this is so all for, this is all for Road and Bridge and Road and Bridge Special Projects. Well, site. So. Yes. I think there actually has to be a special the system, specific the permit, the location right. well, permit fee. Like they're paying twenty five dollars for a fee now, or is this well, no, the, lo the, the location permit for fee is, is a separate agreement. It's it's item number. I think it's the next item up on the agenda. The oil, the one that's an oil and gas or oil oil and gas well drilling permit. I recognize why. What did you say? Yeah, I just think there's. I don't. Uh, Luana might be able to help me on this one. It will go to the road and bridge, but I think there's a specific fund that we have to set up to put it in. Right, Betty? I don't think it can just go directly to the road and bridge. <laughs> I think it can go directly to the road and bridge uh, because it's, it's, being, it's being used strictly by road and bridge. It can go directly to road and bridge. If those funds are going to be used in this fiscal year, then we would have to spe specify a special funds budget out of road and bridge like we did before on the bulk equipment sales, the surplus equipment. But if we're anticipating these funds for future use, 
they will just be shown as a revenue line item in Road and Bridge to be used. But that money will have to be used on main roads where the well sites are at. Right? Correct. Well, I was thinking about ninety five hundred dollars for the well site. Yeah, this measure in the roads and all that because you know you just get it bogged down and that's for each permit, the railroad commission permit. So if company A has four well sites down a road, they pay 9500 per exactly. site. If they put four wells on one pad, it's for each individual well. Correct. The same thing's going to come up on the pipeline and, and with them laying pipelines down for water uh, along the side of the road. The, the same issue is going to be addressed there with regard to them putting, paying for each one of the pipelines that they put up. They're not going to get the luxury of having Right. No, to, to do, where they've been doing one permit for four water mines, that, that's got to come to a halt. So, yeah, they they run one line there and they'll frack four wells at one time. We want to charge them for each one. well. They've been trying to get away with we caught them on several occasions, <laughs> and we want to put in there where if they don't come into our office to get a permit, that we can send the sheriff or someone out there and find them. And because we, they have water leaks and everything else. They're messing up our roads, too. You know, you go along there, there'll be a big old water hole there, here and there. They need, need to be charged for it. And so I think there's a $1,000 permit or non-permit fee in here. If they don't have a permit, if they don't come in to get a permit before they fine. start working, basically it's a fine uh, that that they have a fee that they have to pay for uh, for not having come in and done it up front. And there's a, on, on the pipeline where the road board was boring under the roads for pipelines, that fee is $5,000 for not coming in ahead of time and getting it marked and approved. So, and, and they have to come to the commissioner of each precinct if they're going to put a pipeline across the road. They have to go to that commissioner for that precinct and, and so to make them aware and then they have to come back to Road and Bridge and get the permits approved there and pay the fee. And I've tried to tie them all together where if they get one, they no matter what which one they get, whether it's an entrance permit to do an entrance for a building or for a, uh, a facility or for a well, if they're, if they're going to come in and get a, uh, a permit for an entrance, then they have to do a road use agreement as well. And the reason for that is that some of them would come in and say they're only doing uh, the road, uh, an entrance. They're only building a building. Uh, and then they come back and we find that they're doing something different than one building and they've got a huge amount of traffic coming in to their entrance permit. And so what we've done is put uh, a tie back to the road and bridge agreement because they are using the, the county property when they cross over the uh, the, the right of way. Uh, can I, let me, let me tell you something I think. I've been talking with, I've been talking with these people that, uh, this is what they, this is what they do, but, and I'll be straight up honest with you, I never BS nobody or anything. I could have brought them in a couple of weeks ago and everything, but I didn't want it to seem like, and excuse me, I'm going to be straight up forward with it, I always am. I didn't want to seems like these politicians that were that was trying to bring someone right at the end and use what they can to gain popularity. So I was waiting for this election to be over. That way, you know, me and my opponent could race, you know, head to head without me trying to use my position to gain popularity. But I would really appreciate if these four items could be waited for till the 14th, and I'll bring this person, this these people that I've been talking to, this company. And I think they can give us a lot of insight on this is what they do. Uh, they get as much out of these oil companies as they possibly can. They're going to know things that we have no idea about. Not, I'm not saying that y'all don't as attorneys, but that we have no idea how because this is what they live and breathe every day. And I've been talking with them back and forth on the phone for already about two or three weeks, maybe a month already, but I told these people to go ahead and wait until my election was done, and then I could bring them into y'all, and then if y'all see that we could use them, then we could use them. And if y'all see that they couldn't gain anything for the county, then we wouldn't we wouldn't use them, but I really, really think from talking with this company, uh, they're out of Austin, I really think that they could help us make the decisions. They would be basically our lead people 
against these oil, not against these oil companies, but to make sure that we get every penny that we deserve out of these oil companies. That's from roads, from anything and everything that we can possibly imagine to pull out of these oil companies for the county, for us, because we don't we don't do that every day. We do what we do here. Everybody does what they do there. But I would really like this to wait, and I could get this if, with y'all's permission. I can get these facts to her today. But if you want to pass them, that's fine. As long as we can pass them either way, I don't have a problem with it. But if we could wait to, well, I could hook you up with this person. I could go ahead and give her your number and everything that you can start dealing with her and even before she comes to present herself in commissioner's court. Uh, we can we can go ahead and pass them. Wait till the, no, we can, the no, we, we, the we can, I would, probably the 14th because we're already going to have, we're going to have that other one, so probably on the 14th, but we could go ahead and recognize the parties. Is this a uh, group that you're talking to, this lady, is this a legal firm? Yes. And what, what you, is your proposal to con contract this out rather than doing it in house? Basically, yes. She'll be our she'll be our lead person. She's gonna take she'll take over everything that we have. Of course, need us too, of course, because we're commissioners court. But she's gonna take over. She's gonna let us know how to direct us, how to direct us toward these oil companies and get every cent that we can get out of them. Because this is what she lives and breathes. I would recommend that she's gonna talk to anybody. She ought to be talking to either Mr. Fusselman or at least the county attorney's office. Right, and, right, and Tracy. Right. That's why I want to go ahead and get her presented over here. She had a meeting in Carnes County, but uh, I attended for the county. You know, I took I took her out. The judge, the judge couldn't attend or something like that, so I went ahead and I attended. Or she was out of town. I can't remember, but she didn't attend. Uh, uh, she didn't attend, so I attended it, and that's how I met her. And that's where we're there. Go ahead. I understand Sorry. you're not a citizen, but just wanted to kind of let you know the San Antonio River Authority has worked with, of course, all of the different uh, counties and communities. Um, that we have that are within the Eagle Ford shell, maybe dealing with the same issues. And so, um, I mean, I would just encourage you, of course, to check with the other communities to see what they're doing, um, because many have found some great re results and been able to do that. And I can, um, you know, arrange to have a meeting with a couple of the commissioners and maybe some other representatives um, through either the Eagle Force Shell Consortium or any of those types of things where you can talk to other communities about what they're doing so that you can understand. And many of them are using the road use agreements and many of them are just working with oil companies in different ways. There's been some pretty other ways. I just don't want y'all to reinvent the wheel, you know, take take the time to reinvent the wheel when others have already done that. So I just want to mention that. And, and I appreciate that thought process because that was part of what I did was incorporate the other counties agreements into these. These, these are not my original uh, okay. work. Well, then, yeah. I, I, was, I, I didn't see any point reinventing the wheel either. So uh, when it worked for Judge Darrell Fowler and in, in, uh, Dewitt County and, and uh, had worked for B County uh, in, in their commission, uh, commissioner's court. I, I spoke with, uh, with the different departments and, and the commissioners uh, in B County, and they said that uh, uh, they're the ones who basically gave me the go ahead with regard to what we were doing here. Those so, are the right people for her to be talking to. So I'm glad you said that. Yeah. The only thing that I'd bring up with this is the sooner we do it, the sooner we start collecting funds because we're not going to be able Absolutely. to go backwards right. and collect. Well, right, I, understand. I, I shouldn't say we won't be able entirely to go backwards, but the other counties have found that they that they put in a retroactive agreement in, in the uh, in B County uh, had immediate response and, and, and so forth with regard to getting back for two years. Well, well, I might that. mention that it was Petrohawk that came in probably well over a year ago and offered an, uh, an agreement and 8, nothing 000. in this county has been done. And if you do a railroad commission search, you'll find that over 2,000 wells have been drilled in this county. And if you multiply that by the 8,000 or the 9,500, whichever you choose, we have lost over 10 to $15 million worth of revenue to use toward our road and bridge repair and so every month this is all this was put on here over a month ago and in my opinion two years ago at least a year and a half ago we should have been addressing this and the fact that it just keeps getting kicked down the road is is unbelievable that what we're losing and, and getting there these companies are just laughing at us because there's no type of paperwork or document or agreement to be signed in our county 
Thank you very much. You took the word right out of That's right. Maurice, we'll have one more. I have uh, one more thought, and it's actually an objection to going uh, outsourcing our legal uh, requirements. It seems that just we're getting into a habit of not just with this particular instance, but other subjects where we're getting legal advice at the cost of 500 bucks an hour. Now, we may have the eagle for shale, but I don't think we need to get, we don't need to start spending our money uh, without thinking about it. And I'm also concerned that the apparently the, uh, the county judge took it upon herself to contact this legal firm, and I would like to know if there's any association at all, of any form, to the to our legal counsel in Austin. Well, then we can go ahead on number on number ten. What do you want to do? Ninety-five hundred. And that was B, that's what B County just recently put in as there was ninety-five hundred. Now you're not going to ask for four. Yes. Why not? Why not ten? It's a day off for eight. I'm going to make it ten. B's 95 doesn't mean that we have to go exactly no. agree with what they have. I mean, it's a it's a great and, start. And, but and, and I, I, the, there was a newspaper article that was done around the same time as B County approved theirs, and, and it indicated that they would do as much as the oil companies had, had indicated that they would go as high as 20. Mm -hmm. But I don't think we need that. To be testing that water first, I'll let somebody else test that water. That's, yeah, what, I'm, that's, what, that's what I'm saying. All the work is great, they appreciate it, and 9500 is good, but we don't have to go with what they say. We can go 10. Yes, you are. You know, like if we do 9500, we come back at a later date and say 115. You always have the ability to change your permit fees, and, and so uh, it's just like right now I'm looking at, at doing the, the putting a, a fine on them or, or a, a penalty. Be, if you will, if they come in and have been doing, uh, started an entrance before they got an entrance permit, uh, you, you can change your fees at any time. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to make a motion to approve adopting the Carnes County Road Use Agreement and establish a fee amount of $9,500 and allow Commissioner Precinct 4 Tracy Schindler to execute on behalf of Carnes County. I second a motion. All in favor say aye. Aye. Uh, aye. opposed? No. Motion. Now there, so 9500 is the fee in, in, in this first agreement. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. Ms. Yarder, there's nothing improper about him seconding the motion since he's collecting the fees, is there? No. No. Okay. Okay. Let's check. Item number 11. Oh, he turns them all in. <laughs> <laughs> Discuss, approve, disapprove, adopting the application form and setting fee for the oil and gas well drilling permit. Allow Commissioner Precinct 4, Tracy Shindo, to execute on behalf of Orange County, if approved, or to Betty Arter and Tracy Shindo. And this is, goes back to what Pete asked about before. This is normally where the, I think the, the you'd see the, the 2500 sort of a, a figured into this item. Uh, there was one thing that, that I left off of this one which would need to be amended and it should be item number seven under the permit information and that they, they would be the following items are required when applying for a well permit and they need a road use agreement needs to be supplied so that it shows that they've already gotten a road use agreement before they come and apply for the for the permit. Ms. Yard, if we were like could we have written this and each and every one to say to be amended at the court's discretion at a later date or something like that. So I, I, I think that goes without saying, that goes Carl, without, okay. is, is that okay. y'all have the authority to amend or, or to rescind, to be honest about it. I mean, y'all can rescind these agreements at a later date. If you decide that you want to, to go with a law firm out of, out of uh, Austin and so forth, you can, you can rescind these agreements. We don't have to put a fee on this. Well, you don't have to put a fee on it. I would suggest that you put a fee on it. It has a place at the bottom if you'll need, note where it says fees paid, yes or no. Uh, and the this is where you're looking at. This, this is for this is for the well board, correct? Well, yes. This, this would be to say that, that they they've completed their task and and given you the information you need from the railroad commission all the, the appropriate information, uh, the safety 
uh, where, where the, the, the hazardous materials inventory, whatever they've got on site, it shows they've gotten their 911 number, address number, because those are the things that you're having a problem with right now, is getting them to get their 911 addresses and getting those addresses uh, where, where, where we have emergency personnel that can, can access and find them. And, and I know that Sharon, <laughs> she's had a tough time trying to stay up with it. Uh, and it's, it's just something that needs to be done. This, this forces their hand. What would be a fair fee we would put on? Well, th this is where I think, you know, you're looking at a, like a permit fee. It, it, it'd be the same as that, a $500 fee. Okay. For, for the well bore. And that's, less that's than like, disagreement. that's normal in all the counties? Well, it, it, well see, it, I thought this would be bad. Yeah, that's what I was going to say. Wait, so like, you pipeline like, permit? No. In fact, the first one we agreed on the $9,500 right. one. Now, this, the way I read this one, this is the way that one should be. Well, and, and this may be where you would want to, to change it and, and, and make this one your, your $9,500 fee. And, yeah. and first one should have been the other one. Okay, then well, well. Because the first one is Carnes County Road Use Agreement. Yeah, yeah. see. So that's a, that's, you know, that's a road use agreement. That's an agreement for them to use it's the road back and forth to It's time for this, Tracy, the, because right. this, is, this is what you're, you're not really charging them, a, you're charging them per well drill, yes, but you're not really charging them for drilling the well. They've paid their permit to be the Railroad Commission. It's a road use agreement. What, what the road use agreement is what, what we needed the, the, the big dollars for, and, and this basically forces their hand to say they've got all these documents in hand, one of them being the road use agreement, before they get to, to this point. Now, like Ms. Hall pointed out, that one company, without mentioning their name, they agreed, volunteered $8,000, and I believe that was for a well bore or a well site now it was per well bore per well bore so yes and this there's is eight thousand right there right because see our, our problem with the with the site agreement if we had a, if we we're talking about the permit fee is that the site agreement or, or the entrance fee those go, were were kind of limited if they if they put four of them on one one pad then we're we're limited to that location we don't want to be limited to a location we want to have the the per per bore and so the road use agreement gets us to that because it, it's, it's contained within it. So then if we charge them, say, 500 for this fee here, it'd be flat 500 or 1500 Well, it, 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 that's, that's, those, that's an issue that y'all have to determine, but... See, we charge them 9500 and 500 that, that put us at 10000 Yeah. we're talking about. Well, and like you said, you checked with other counties. We didn't reinvent the wheel here. Right. And if other counties say the road use agreement is 9500 the application for the drilling permit or well bore would be equal to or if not greater than 9500 I mean, what, which is worth more, drilling the well or using the road? I mean, well, the, the bottom of, line is that, is that all of the fees here go to the road and bridge department. Yes, I so understand. It, using the road is more damaging than that entrance. Well, I understand, but the road uses $9,500, then they put five deals there. Now, that's five fracking jobs, so, and they're not going to frack them all at one time. They're going to frack one and then... Well, but, and, and that's why they have to pay the... Oh, road use agreement per well bore. Well, I'm not sure. You know what I mean? If, yeah. I, mean I, I, I have one question about this. Yeah. this. This says permit to construct access drive facilities on Carnes County right away. This means a farmer wants to put a 20-foot pipe in to get into a gap. It's going to cost him $500 to put that in there. Not if it's his property, okay. his okay. use only. Okay. Now, that's his own. This, I mean, that's not I mean, uh, that commercial. Okay. We need to put commercial or something in This is strictly commercial. Okay. okay. Like, for instance, the whole company is making money out of this. Yeah. This is strictly for all our people. This is strictly for all our people. Right? Yes. And, and that is something that I omitted, and so I, I would have to address uh, 
uh, adding that to it to, uh, to omit uh, a landowner's use, okay, uh, for going into his own land if he wants to, to put, a, put a, a culvert in that, that they're exempt from this fee? See, the landowners buy the pipe, buy the concrete, and everything, we install it for. All companies are different. They do everything themselves. I just want to make sure that's specified. Yes, sir. And now we're going to the entry permit, right, Pete? Staying, I'm sorry. Okay, so staying, staying on number, staying on number 11. The fee could be, the fee basically, uh, Trace, the gas and well drilling permit fee could be anything that we put the yeah. fee for. And it could be five hundred, it could be a thousand, it could be fifteen hundred. You know, that's whatever y'all think. Now, what what is the normal one, man? Did you check right. on to see what the other counties are? There was it five? Was it five hundred? Around five hundred? Or we don't really we have tap it on? Don't know. For the for the other two, the no, the number, our number, our number on number number eleven. Down. I'm sorry, I'm going to go back to number eleven so We're we can get we can get through with number eleven okay. and move on. Number eleven. Uh, I don't know. No. <coughs> I don't know, honestly, what other counties around have on this type of a specific agreement, mm -hmm. uh, because I, the the pipeline and the entrance permit, I checked on. Okay, but this one but you haven't checked on. This one I have not checked. So this one could be from 500 to 5,000. Yeah. I mean, but we just charge a, put a 500 in it. And when we find out some other information, we can always come back. And yeah. It. Or let's let's uh, put it for 15, and then when we find out, we can come back and amend it to make sure that we can clear ourselves. Uh, the pipeline people will do just as much damage, if not more, to a road than what an oil well site will, because of the amount of traffic they put on them roads. You know, hauling the pipes in, and all the welders and all them pickup running around, they'll destroy so, the road. So basically, you're saying that it should be way higher than that. Yeah. Because, because they're going to put, they're going to, they're going to destroy they, county roads no exactly. matter what. When you got a hundred vehicles running up and down that road every night, they'll destroy it. And that's that's something that y'all need to look at. That, that's that's on that's number thirteen. That's on thirteen. Yeah. yeah. Okay, you're talking. You talk. Well, I'm sorry. We keep everybody yeah, jumping around. We're, we're still on. Around. We're on number eleven. Okay. Are we on number eleven? We're on number eleven. Yes, we're on number eleven. We haven't made a motion yet. Push it. Push it. Push it higher. And we we're we're too high. Then we can come back. Alana, any of these uh, conferences you go to, have you, you heard any talk of this? No, I don't go to oil and gas this, conferences. No, but in the conference, surely they talk about. Maybe somebody needs to make a phone call to the other counties. And we put it too high. Better put it low than we know it. Yeah. They're, they're destroying the heck out of our roads, well, man. Yeah, I'll put that 95, that's 10,000. Oh, on, yeah, on the other one. Yeah, put it all together. We can make it 11,000 for 15. They're going to pay. They're going to pay, you know. I mean, they're destroying our roads. And 9,500 bucks, man, they, that's a couple of truckloads of gravel. Yeah, yeah. You know, we don't, we, you know that, man. What's 10,000 bucks, man? Just like that. It's a drop well, in the road. As an example. So let's go 1,500. Okay. As an example, uh, Judge Fowler and, and uh, DeWitt came out with, had a, uh, a study done. They estimated that it could cost as much as $432 million to do the roads and to repair the damage <coughs> during the next 20 years. In right. the, and $432 million is a hell of a lot of money. Sure is. Uh, so, and, and they were saying that that they were looking at something like 3,250 wells at 65 acre spacing. Well, we've already got over 2,000 wells in this county, and this is what D. Whit was looking at over a long, much longer period, and saying that this was what they were looking at in, in road road abuse. Okay, so just make it, make it that you want you want to make it. I'm going to make the motion to approve adopting application <coughs> form and setting the fee for the oil and gas drilling permit at $1,500 and then allowing Commissioner of Precinct 4 Tracy Schindler to execute on behalf of Corns County. With regard to the one amendment that I would have of adding the road use agreement to the item number seven. Right. Yes, sir. <coughs> I second. second. I second. Can we have a second? All in favor say aye. 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 None opposed? Motion passes.
Item number 12, discuss, approve, disapprove, adopting application form and setting for the fee to per, I'm sorry, discuss, approve, disapprove, adopting application form and setting fee for the permit to construct access driveway facilities on Carnes County right away. Allow Commissioner Precinct 4 Tracy Schindler to execute on behalf of Carnes County if approved. Arthur Betty, uh, Betty Arter and Tracy Schindler. Yeah. And this is the one where we would add the landowner exemption. Right. Okay. And, uh, right. And we do the, the uh, water lines also, so. So you want to put the water line in this agreement or the next one? Um, you put it in the next one, I guess, but. It'd probably be easier to do here. It'd be easier on this one because okay. we don't go by the feet. On the boards, we go by the feet. Uh, it's so much for five, uh, 50 feet, and then after that, it's so much per foot after that. So those feet, this 500 plus, you know, as much as six fifty, seven hundred dollars for each road. Uh, I think if we put the water line deal in here. I've been charging five hundred dollars for each driveway entrance, and and when they you see these water lines, these big ten inch uh, water lines down the highways or dirt roads going to the fracks, I charge five hundred for each one. And when they make a curve and go down another road number, it's another five hundred. Been doing that because everybody knows that the irrigation pipes they don't fit together good and they leak and you'll have water and it had rained around here in a while and there'll be big mud holes in the roads and stuff like that. So we just need to get as much as we can out of there for that. Thank you. And this is the one that also has the thousand dollar penalty right. for doing uh, work on an entrance that they don't have permit. So what do you what do you say? You want to go higher than five? No, no five hundred is fine. I don't understand. I don't, or I don't, I don't see limitation in there. Suppose they leave that line out there for a year and a half. It should be a ninety day deal. Is uh, that in there? Uh, yes. Uh, By the permit becomes null and void in ninety days. Uh, item number seven. Okay. Oh. So could you change the title on this to permit to? a permit to construct a commercial access driveway okay. and then that would take yeah. care of your landowners not having to be charged right so. checked on this 500 is a normal yeah. fee for that yes. are there some counties higher than I, that I, I honestly don't know I just checked with the two closest to it so that I don't have these type of agreements and there were 500 we only had, uh, had 500 uh -huh. uh, and I think Bowie County had 5 they have 500 uh, but the, there's nothing that says I mean you have to remember we're getting much more traffic than any of these other counties right. around us so it, Trying to trying to keep us even with them is it doesn't doesn't equate because right. we're we're getting probably three times at a minimum three times the, the traffic on these roads that the neighboring counties. I mean they've only got 18 wells that they consider uh, uh, Eagleford Wells in the county. Probably the locals have put in some things. They since what the information the better gave us, y'all don't want to go higher than that? No, I think that's present on that one. And do you want to put anything in there regarding the, the water mines, what the length of time is that they can have the water mines just, out? Uh, they shouldn't be uh, like the 90 day regulation principle we have. Let's, yeah. okay. Let's stick with the 90 day. All right. Uh, and they have to remove them. I, I tell them that they have, you know, as soon as they're through, they got to get them off the roof, and they have to put them up next to the fence. Okay, so we, if we do happen to have a shredder go by there, they can cut and not have to worry about running over their pipe. And they do, they do put in colored pipes for us because uh, we don't let them cut the road, other than putting in a colored pipe, because we don't allow those. Uh, Water bridges there because we've had some cars being injured by that, and we don't need that problem. 
Every time, or it's just every here and there. Wherever they need, wherever it needs to be done. And if they need to add pipes, they come and ask us, and we'll tell them where to put the pipe. Right. Okay. okay. In, in okay. regards to uh, item number 12 on the agenda, I make a motion to approve adopting the application and setting the fee for the permit to construct commercial driveway facilities on Carnes County right of way. Uh, and make the fee $500 and allow Commissioner Precinct 4 Tracy Schindel to execute on behalf of Carnes County. All right. There's a first and a second. All in favor say aye. Uh, Any opposed? I oppose, and the only reason I oppose is because I think that we should get more out of these old companies because Jeff's having a hard time controlling these roads, and I think we should get as much as we can. Okay. Three, four, one again, one that passes. Okay. Number 13. Discuss, approve, disapprove, adopting the Carnes County Pipeline Permit fees and specifications. Allow Commissioner Precinct 4 Tracy Schindler to execute on behalf of Carnes County. Arthur Betty Order and Tracy Schindler. And, and this has attached to the back is the, the last page is a, a basically sort of a, a minimal set of specifications. And, and uh, uh, it, it says on it that, that that's where this $500 fee is required. This may be the one where y'all want to change the $500 fee to a higher fee. Uh, currently, we are charging $500, uh, I believe, my correct, Tracy? $500 plus $30 a foot for uh, like over 50 feet. $30 a foot after 50? Yes. yes. That's what we're charging. Yeah. Isn't that, I think that's what the whole purpose yeah. is. Yeah, that's what it is. That's what it is, Jeff. <coughs> so that would need to go. No, most of them are, are wider than 50 feet. Oh, well, width. Okay, we're talking about width, not width. Yeah. yeah. The width of the road, you know, from fence to fence, that's what we charge on. Okay. The right of way. Are you talking about 12? I was talking about 15. The pipeline. We're talking about the length. 30 foot, a foot. Yeah, mm -hmm. the, from one fence line to the next fence line. Mm -hmm. They bore under here. Okay. Right. So they, we, we charge from this to this. Right. Oh, okay. That's on a board. That's a real yeah. board. Okay. Okay. Pipeline, gas pipeline, or oil pipeline. And a road board. Okay. And that's what our fee is now. It's 500 plus. But most of the roads are 30 something, 40 something, 50. So there's almost never an over. Pipeline permit fee special. So it's, it's not put on there right? Is that what you're saying? Number 13? It should in Corn County pipeline fee and specifications that be the same as the road board. Right, Big Order? That's correct. All right, Tracy, I have read this further. Does this strictly exclude? Cutting a road. Yeah. 50, yeah. 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, 20, Hold our temper cut and put your casing in and your pipe in all at one time. You can go to our down for a long time, either. Less expensive to the companies. Yeah, well, don't, we shouldn't don't. care what it costs them. Yeah. Uh, this, this way, there's not going to be a, a oh, bump boy. in the road because you know it's going to sink, and if you don't believe it, you can come to my property and I'll show you. We got about <laughs> 500 lines crossing, and then there's, there's sinkholes everywhere. So over went through it, will, it will sink. I don't care how good they fix it. Well, somewhere in here I saw that it had, uh, they're responsible for it. What, what yeah, they're right? responsible for, for going back to get them to come back. Three years, I, I didn't see it. Uh, 
want to, did you change it to three yes, years? Yes, I did change yeah. it to three years. Okay. That's five hundred plus. In other words, there's the papers that were handed to me. Whatever it says is the ones I had in my bag. Yes, sir. So we're just renewing. Yeah. So that's all we need. That's the case thing. That's what. That's what I'm just putting. That's it. That that on the case. It should all be case to case. Contract because the pipes walk back and forth and they don't hold them. Yeah, they don't case them. They don't case it because the pipelines move and they. They use a. They use a thicker wall pipe when they go. All of them are different. You can go by there and see a road board. There'll be the green pipe coming, and then the road board pipe will be either gray or red. Yeah, and it'll, it'll be it'll cool. be twice as thick. Yeah. Well, I know that's I know that's not true. They don't case them because they do case them. Well, used to. Uh, I I try not to let them do that. No, but no. This is a normal no, price. Okay. The fees for the surrounding counties. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now I know, on, guys. I know on number twelve right here. Uh, I heard one said that we left that at five hundred. I wanted more, but we left that at five hundred because then it would hurt. The, well, not it's not just for the old company. It would go commercial. It'll be also for the residents from here trying to establish something. It would go over them, right? So that was one reason, maybe a part of the reason staying at five hundred. But this one here, there's nobody here in Carnes County that's gonna pour under a, a road. I, Bob. So it wouldn't hurt nobody. You know, it, this is strictly for the oil companies right here. So we would go higher on this amount. They got to they have to pay no matter what. Because now they're trying to be a bully or anything. I'm just saying they have to pay. They're damaging the roads and everything. Even, number, number if the Loso comes through putting a water line in, they pour. Mm -hmm. Also, if they put a water line in through where they're Yeah, board. they pour. They pour too. Oh, yeah. They pour. So does Sunco down here on the northern part of the county. They pour. They do not cut the roads. Okay. So those would go to it also too. Mm -hmm. I remember we talked about this. Um, I think Bob mentioned something when we talked about this before that they're not actually damaging the road because they're born under it. So right. they don't want to like knock their head off. Yeah, okay. I mean, if that's my right here, guys. Yeah. How many times do they bore? How many? How many? What you said, how many permits do we get to bore under a road? Uh -huh. I think how many? Great. Yeah, like a month. Or uh, uh, I guess we could probably do 20, 30 a month. Mm. Yeah. So there's not really that much. I've, I've, yeah, I've been averaging around 40,000, 41,000 a month on just the water lines, entrances, and bores. About around 41,000 this past month. It's just 500 plus. They add the footage in there. It's all written in there, so it could be as much as 650, 700 for a wide road. And that's without touching the, no damage in the road, no damage no in the road at all. Okay, because they they're in the other people's properties. Okay. For other people, they don't they don't do enough to. In regards to item 13 on the agenda, I make a motion to approve adopting the Carnes County Pipeline Permit fees and specifications and that fee is currently $500 and we can refer back to the uh, instrument itself and allow Commissioner of Precinct 4, Tracy Schindel, to execute on behalf of Orange County. I'll second. I'll second. And there's one correction that would have to be made and that was the one that Pete brought up earlier on item number 14 on the specification of the back page. It needs to be changed from six months to three years. Okay. With that in the motion? Right. Yeah. And there's a problem with Carson. 13. 13. 13. Who made the motion? I did. Is that in your motion too? Yes. Okay. Tracy, you second? I in your motion? Yes. Okay. First second you've been made. All the favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Then opposed motion passed. Uh, item number 14. Discuss, approve. Oh. Before you do this subject, I'd like to say one thing. I recognize I'd like it. to thank the county commissioner's court for everybody who lives in the county on uh, the country roads. This is the first time that I can recall where the commission's court has done something for the people out the country that will actually improve the conditions out there for them. They don't care about neighborhood watch and they don't care and they care about security, but they know it's gonna be a while for them to get there. But one thing they all care about is can I get home tonight? Yes, sir. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you, Murray. Thank you, Betty. Item number 14, discuss, approve, disapprove, payment to David Bogle, EBA, Synchro Architecture for services in relation to the offices of On the Square, Arthur P. Yeah. Okay, I'm withdrawing that. Uh, this is premature. I thought that 
I had asked for it to come up, but uh, we, hadn't, we haven't finished with uh, stuff yet. So no action on it? No action, and I want him to be here when it's done. Okay. Yes, no problem. Item number 15, moving along. Discuss, approve, disapprove, converted, and private road back to a county road this tract of land that was donated to the county by Thomas B. Baker and Natalie B. Baker for the purpose of building a road to be used by the public. The public road was, road was converted some time ago to a private road by actions of the county. The owners of the land desire to have it redesignated as a public road according to the original intent of the grantors. Arthur Cliff Baker and Robert Busselman. I had gone out there with Mr. Baker to look at it and uh, we were out there one morning in a couple of hours probably. And he's going to tell you all, of, he goes more about the history of it. Uh, I'll preface my statements with a comment my wife made before I left. She looked me in the eye and said, remember these folks, if they ask what time it is, don't go to watch for them. <laughs> and that said, let's go in 90 minutes, I'll be brief. Uh, in a nutshell, the property in question, southeast of the Shope community on Highway 239, County Road 129 makes a loop to the north east of that road and it uh, comes back again and goes southeast and uh, there is a segment there in which uh, back two decades ago uh, properties changing hands uh, traditionally through a property that my dad owned at that time through that property all the landowners who had property beyond it towards the river had to go through the middle of my dad's property uh, subsequently as, as land use has changed we had some crop land in there and some folks who were leasing it to put the cropland in the irrigation systems and it was causing some real problems with access and it was decided that uh, my dad chose to provide a right of way through the county. We have an agreement dated November of 93 in which the county had agreed to maintain a roughly a 700 foot long section of road paralleling the side of my dad's property to give access to these other nine landowners that we had out there. And uh, it was being maintained and uh, from that point forward in the last few years I noticed some degradation but we were also undergoing some changes in the structure of the county and the way things were done didn't think too much about it and then I came to see Miss Chesser about some permits I had bought the property for my mother after my dad passed away and getting some permits I found out that that and getting the 911 address and permits approved for a water well and septic system that this was no longer a county road uh, which explained to me why there had not been anybody down there with a blade or any material recently. And what I'm asking is that uh, in order to give access and keep this road navigable for all the landowners, if we could go ahead and redo what had been done. Apparently, I don't even know for sure if this is true, there was a period in which the roads were reviewed, uh, public notices put in the paper, and if you had an issue with a particular road that you wanted to keep it in, there you had to come show up and, and defend your property or let someone know. Uh, I was heads down my, like everybody else is in my own business and didn't notice that public notice and that's when it kind of went away. So I basically asking the commissioners to consider this and reinstate the uh, agreement that was done back in 93 in which the county at that point had agreed, agreed in perpetuity and I, if I look that word up I think it means forever to maintain that particular road segment. How long is that road? About 700 feet, the actual legal description, I think you have a copy of, it talks about one segment being 694 feet long, and the other segment on the opposite side, 707. It's not exactly a, a rectangle. Where is it located? I don't have a... We, we don't don't have a oh, you don't have a copy of that? I don't, uh, have, I don't have anything up here to look at. It. I apologize if I may approach momentarily. Yes, uh, yeah. This particular segment, if you can picture down here, we have County Road 129, 239 is going to be down here at the bottom. 239 running out of Shoke. And there's a segment of County Road that comes up. There's an old cemetery. An old cemetery back on that County Road. It comes up to this corner. And again, this being north. And then runs back down this way towards the west. And then back to 239 again. And after it crosses 239, it continues on towards uh, uh, the southeast. Bottom line is this particular segment. This was my dad's property. There's other properties back here of which I am one but there's other nine others and this picture of property what they used to do is come back right back through the middle of my dad's place but now he sliced off roughly 38 to 40 feet by 700 feet that was being maintained so that's the same and I apologize I thought y'all had a copy of this how many how many land down that road? There, there's nine uh, different folks that have interest in the land down this way sir. 
in addition to myself. My, my question is this, if we do the reverse, bring us back to the county road, do all the landowners have a right to object to being made a public road? Yeah. They all have. They all have a right. It would have. It would have to be all the. Everybody would have to be going notified. It, going the same way because if there's one person that says no, then it's going to go again. That's what we've done in the past. We don't have. A, we don't have a problem. We look at it. We'll do it. We, we don't have a problem. But, but I think we have to have a whole land on the make it public road. Okay, but the but the uh, the right of way itself was granted on on my property. Yours only. only on mine only. Now, now the landowners themselves had constructed 6,000 feet of bleacher road to replace the, the access that they the, had. The whole easement was Do done, all the square footage on yours. On my property. It was a split. That's okay. correct. Okay, so the whole easement, if it's coming back, it's going all back on your property. That's okay. correct. Sir. Yeah, and see, it's actually still there. So it's just from, it's a, it was changed to a private road. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the, the, it was done by D. Okay. By Commissioner's Court in 93? Well, it was accepted by the Commissioner's Court in 93. Thomas B. Baker and Matthew B. Baker, which is your parents, correct? Yes, correct. They're the one that owned it at the time, and they just, uh, they, they, they gave them the deed. Okay. So I don't know, uh, we're not, it's not going to be closed. It's uh, just going to go back to where it was. And actually, since it's a private road, some of those people could use it. I mean, they were not precluded yet from using it. So, uh, and just for an example, just here speaking, if we would make it back a county road, not saying we are, but I'm just saying we would make it back a county road since it's all your easement and on your land, is would there ever be a problem with the other people using it? No, that's like that? no. Joe Baker, any problem? That's that's uh, no problem. that's the purpose <laughs> because uh, but it, you can when you get ready to close a road, that affects the people's use that are on each side of the road. Right. So they have to be notified. In this case doesn't affect them at all. It, it gives them something additional. Now, a lot of, the only reason I asked on that part was because there was something, I think something in Rangi a few years ago, and then something about a road opening, and they, they, some of the people went against it because they said, well, that just makes it a dump site. You can go down to a oh. dead end and throw trash. And that's the only reason I asked that, that if there's going to be anybody opposed because if, if it's open and they use it as a dump site. It'll be a dump site on my property. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, I no, understand. Yeah, I, it's all, I was just mm -hmm. trying to see that. But I mean, I don't have an issue with it, but just making sure that nobody could come up to us later on in a year or something and dump a bed on their property and say, hey, you didn't even advise us that you were opening it up on easement on his property, but there gives the public access to my property. Yeah. Actually, it stays in private road. It's going to be more likely to be dumped on than uh, it stays in common road because it's people going to use it. Mm -hmm. And they'll be looking at it every, every so often. Yeah. Okay. And, uh, just, just a footnote to that uh, dumping business is the uh, initiative with the River Authority. I already was pitching on mine. Okay, I've got six of my own tires. And if I go down this <laughs> section 129, I know where three more are, and I know where four more, I can grab those at the same time. So you're absolutely right about people picking other things up and bringing them in. On that, on that road, Mr. Baker? Yes, sir. Is there any, like, I don't know the condition of the road, I don't know anything about the road. I don't know if it's on a, it's like in a little, a no water crossing that's gonna. Well, Mr. Viatti, you were out there recently. Uh, we, we started the process after I talked to Ms. Chester. Yeah, Mr. Viatti had gone out there. That's I don't, it. it's, it. it's pretty much a, a steady grade downhill, very slight from one end to the other. And there's nothing, no uh, crossing, water crossing the road at that section. Well, the they go down that far. Uh, Mr. Baker, this picture, I realize I printed it on cheap paper, but uh, I was being tight. Yes. Uh, but you so can see from there's no low water crossing, any culverts that's going to be not cost effective toward the county yeah. later on or something? Just slope a small grade that goes down. You can show the small grade going down, down, but if the whole road really takes it up. No, way. the water runs good on the sides and that's not it keeps going on. the water dishes for water. Hmm? Just a little bit of a water dish on either side. And that's it. Okay. And you rock it and the road will stay there. <coughs> okay, in regards to item 15 on the agenda, I make a motion to approve converting a private road back to a county road. This tract of land was donated to the county by Thomas B. Baker and Natalie B. Baker for the purpose of building a road to be used by the public. The public road was converted to some, some time ago to a private road by actions of the county. The owners of the land desire to have it redesignated as a public county road according to the original intent of the grant forms. Uh, uh, second one thing that you get from this. I'm sorry, go ahead, go ahead, I'm sorry. He did. 
one thing that you get by this, D does not accept the minerals, so you get the minerals too. You've had them all along. Oh, wow. <laughs> okay, can I, can I say something before I go ahead? And I, and I don't have a problem with it or anything. I just want to state this. If we're gonna, if we're gonna do this, uh, we're gonna probably have people crawling out of the woodwork and uh, wanting to throw gold back on the county. We have to go ahead, I guess, like Jeff, you're saying, you're saying it's a good road. It's not, it's gonna be cost effective to the county later on. I don't want to accept a road that was given in 80 something, 70 something. It's gonna cost us half a million dollars and it's on a low water crossing across a dry creek bed or something like that. And then if we don't do this or put this stipulation in our motion right now, they're gonna come back to us in three or four months and it's gonna be discrimination. We're not giving this road, we're not giving it. We have to make sure that we make our motion now because the road's in fair condition, good condition. It doesn't have no culverts in there. It doesn't, it's not, we're not looking at half a million dollars to you know, lace it with rock. We can't just accept, or in my opinion, we can't just accept the road and we're gonna get bit in the butt later on. And I understand that comment. Uh, my biggest, biggest concern was the process by which it was removed from the rolls initially was flawed. The notifications based on, you know, there was documentation on file here in the county somewhere that who had granted this in perpetuity, whatever that big word is, you know, <laughs> yeah, I for me to say, but uh, I, I felt like if, if at that time, if a notification via letter had been made, hey, we're getting, we're considering dropping this, do you guys still need this segment? We'd have been right here saying, hey, oh gosh, yes, we use it all the time, mm -hmm. you know, and it never would have happened. That, and that may be the case for the other circumstances you're bringing up, maybe not. But in this case, I feel like this does warrant approval. So, well, I'm sorry. So, that kind of like our motion, I'm not trying to put anything into motion, but because it has no culverts, has no maintenance on it right now, may have a little bit of maintenance, has no low water crossings. How can we put that stipulation there, Mr. Busselman, to where we don't get bit back? Because I guarantee you other people will come back trying to give us our roads. Well, but the situation, the county, the situation is kind of unique in that it was a public road starting in 1993. And uh, it just reverted to a private road. When the... When we when did the, all the roads. Yes, um, when you did all the roads, we dis disconnect, discontinued this one and kept this one, discontinued this one. Okay, so we have, a so we have a leg to stand on. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a unique situation. And it wasn't ever an abandoned road. Okay, yes, that's that's abandoned. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Okay. I recognize. Uh, we never found any county road number on your county road. You came to me asking an address, and it met all the qualifications for a private road. One landowner, multiple use. So we did number it recently. It was not listed as a private road in between. Okay. It became a private road when he asked me for an address. It has no number on it. No records have I been able to find with a county road number on it. Not even in his document does it issue a, a county road number. But you do have the documents that it was a county road in 93. <coughs> it just didn't have a county road in 93. But it didn't have a number. They never gave it a number. I don't have any old ones. Whatever documentation he has that his family gave it to the county. It was never numbered after that that we could find. It's, it's not that long a road, and it, uh, right. it's a spur. <laughs> no, it's, it's, it's a, a spur. spur. I just, yeah. I'm just trying to protect the county. Yes, for the future. Just for the future. That's all. I don't have a problem with doing it. I'm just watching our butts here. Sharon, do we have to put a public notice in the paper? I don't know about a public it? notice, but it, uh, on the next agenda, you're going to have to number it because it does not have a county road number. But there's no reason for it. Okay. On the next Okay, I just wanted to let you finish talking. Okay, uh, motion was made, seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion passed. Thank you, Mr. Baker. Okay, moving along to item number 16. Discuss, approve, disapprove, changing the due opening dates for the COVID benefits proposal, the original due opening dates, 8-7 and 8-8. Request date change to 8-21 and 8-22. Arthur Luana. The reason I'm requesting this is it took a lengthy time period to get our claims history from our current insurance provider. So therefore, our proposers need at least two weeks to market to get us good quotes. So there was no way they would be able to have proposals to open by the 8th. So that's why we're asking for the extension to the 21st and 22nd. Okay. Yeah. I'll make a motion to approve change the new opening dates benefit proposals, original due opening dates 8-7 and 8-8, request dates changed to 8-21 and 8-22. I second. We got it. <laughs> uh -huh. 
Motion has been made and second. All in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? None. Motion passes. Just got to be named and signed. Item number 17, discuss, approve, disapprove a resolution from the Indigent Defense Commission that will allow Carnes County to receive reimbursement for the indigent defense costs that Carnes County has incurred and allow County Judge to execute a resolution if approved by the Luana Council. This is an indigent defense resolution that needs to be signed to enable us to apply for reimbursement for a portion of our indigent defense costs that we've incurred. Okay, in regards to item 17, I make a motion to approve a resolution from the Indigent Defense Commission that will allow Carnes County to receive reimbursement for the indigent defense costs that Carnes County has incurred and allow County Judge to execute resolution. I second. Motion has been made and seconded. All in favor say aye. 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 Any against? None. Motion passes. Uh, since the judge isn't here, I'm going to sign for it. Okay, I don't know. I'll do it. Up. Item number 18. Discuss, approve, disapprove, amendment for modification of contractor order number 80-98-0024. HSCEDM-12-F-1G156. Allow county judge to execute if approved. What is that supposed to be? <laughs> do we have that in our package? Uh, I understand that's just formality. We do these all the time after the effect work, what you said. Yes. It's amendments to the GO agreements. Uh, okay. Motion to approve this. Amendment modification contract number 80-98, whatever. Allow Joe Six. All in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? None. Motion passes. I'll take care of it and the judge is absent. I'll sign for it. Uh, item number 19. Discuss, approve, disapprove amendment and modification contract order number EROIGSA 11 0 0 4 HSCEDM 12 F IGO 86 allow county judge to execute if approved. Same, same thing. Okay. I'll make a motion we amend modification contract number. All those numbers he just said and allow county judge to execute. <laughs> <laughs> I second that motion. All in favor say aye. None opposed. None opposed. Motion passed. Any opposed, I'm sorry. Uh, item number 20. Discuss, approve, disapprove presentation in 15 to 20 minutes regarding inland base material which is produced at the facility in Altair, Altair, Texas, Arthur, Monty Peck. Good morning, Commissioners. Morning, morning. Uh, I'm Chris Garrett with Inland Environmental out of Altair. We've been in business for about 12 years. Uh, we did our first road in 2003 with Lavaca County. Um, our base is actually made from oil field waste. We are a recycling facility. Uh, we're permitted by the Railroad Commission, uh, and our base is considered a, a newly manufactured product once it leaves our facility. No repercussions. Uh, we have over a couple hundred miles of road down between Lavaca County, Wharton County, Austin County, and Fayette County. Uh, we build locations with it every, and a few other things. We have some people use it for head walls on roads and bridges and I want to add that uh, I know y'all's meeting ran long today, but if any of the co commissioners are interested in looking at some samples that I have, I have a pickup park at the corner uh, after y'all's meeting. I'll be waiting for anybody who wants to look at samples I can discuss more with you then. No problem, dude. Man, it was our man right there. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, he spoke with David before I gave it his hand word. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Uh, is there any questions? Uh, Y'all have chemical testing of this? Yes, sir. Y'all provide us with that stuff? Yes, sir. We can. What's in it? Yes, sir. All that? Yes, sir. We have MSDS sheets on and everything. I want to see something. Okay. 
Chris, right? Yes. Chris, thanks, Chris. So the question is, do we have any money to pay? We're going to go to item number 21, payment of bills. <laughs> $10,400 payment to B&G contractors. That is for the roof materials, the metal roof at the new health clinic. Just slightly down from that is an $1,800 $1 payment for the enlargement of my office. <laughs> Thank you very much. I can breathe. Breathing room, right? Exactly. Does that come out of your budget? No, sir. That came out of capital outlay exactly where you budgeted it last year. And that is the exact amount budgeted also. We did not go over. That's good. <coughs> I could have, but we didn't. <laughs> On page four, there's a $126,650 payment to Knapp Chevrolet. That is for the new ambulance. It has been picked up and in the process of being equipped. And Bob, don't know if he's done my time warrant yet or not, for Mr. Lenhart. Those are basically the highlights of this bill cycle. Did you need Mr. Bustleman back in here? No, I just need to make sure he's taking care of that with the alloys. Going out. And on page 14, you'll see the total of this cycle of bills, $636,806.46. I'm sorry. Did we get the time we done with the alloys? We have them, but I don't know if uh, we, they're done. But they're done with an interest rate that Mr. Uh, uh, what's his last name? Lindhart. Lindhart said it was, not, it was off by 1%. On 1%. It is exactly what he did okay, because Carol I, has it on record and I right. gave you a copy of it. Okay, I haven't seen it. I guess it must came. I gave it to Sylvia. Um, two weeks ago. Two weeks ago. We never talked. But in any case, so they, it is, it is, they are done, yes. And he came here to pay it. And he said, looked up and said, no, the interest rate is wrong. And I did not have a copy of it. And I think this was like Friday or so. I forgot what it was. But that's what we're looking at. Okay. I'll probably see him tomorrow. I'll tell you. Tell him I sure would like a check. Yeah. Well, I guess so. Yeah. You're kind of out of balance, aren't you? Mm -hmm. But he may want to charge extra for that. Mm -hmm. uh, I might want to charge him. Please be Thank you. All in favor say aye. 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 You're all through it. You're all through it. 